Hi, hello and welcome to another video by Fermove. Um, as you probably would have expected today, I want to continue talking about the Uyghur tribunal that is taking place in London from the 4th to the 7th of June 2021. I would like to start at 2 hours and 47 minutes with the testimony of the UTJD or the Uyghur Transitional Justice Database. The UTJD is described as an organization that tracks the disappearance and uh, extrajudicial incarceration of Uyghurs in East Turkestan. Now, the first thing that I gotta ask is, what is East Turkestan? That is not a country that does not exist. But anyway, let's continue. We're just getting warmed up. Now, the lady doing the presentation on behalf of UTJD quickly reveals that her organization is funded by the NED. In other words, by the State Department of the United States or the CIA, if we want to keep it real. Now, she quickly starts to use language that is designed to portray China in a negative light. While China calls its institutions re-education centers, she is quick to rename them as concentration camps, just because it has a better ring to it, I suppose. Now, uh, when Jeffrey Nees, the, the president, asked her to focus on her expertise and uh, primary sources, which is basically the people that she talked to face to face, she simply just doesn't do it. She avoids the question. Instead, she, con she continues um, reading uh, the list of content from her report. And at one point, she mentions the marginalization of the Uyghur language. And uh, I just ask myself, I was there a couple of months ago and I saw Uyghur language everywhere around Xinjiang. Well, I listened to Uyghur radio uh, in, in a taxi. Daniel Dombrell himself, he has shown book sh bookstores selling classics in Uyghur language. So I really have no idea where this lady is coming from. But uh, that will become apparent in a few minutes. So just hold on. She then continues to talk about the history of Xinjiang and she mentions that about a hundred academics and journalists as well as Uyghur activists have been detained or have become targets of the authorities. She mentions one particular linguist uh, that was accused and sentenced to 15 years for inciting separatism. This seems to be actually the reason she claims that Uyghur language is being targeted, this particular linguist. However, if separatism is a crime and authorities are trying to eradicate this problem, well, perhaps those academics and those journalists and those activists, they're all connected to a separatist movement and, well, that would explain the interest that authorities have on those people. Now, at around um, 2 hours and 59 minutes, one of the panel members asked the lady where did they get the data. And she responds that, and I kid you not, they mainly get it from social media. So think about that for a second. Social media, how credible is that? But again, let's continue. Now, the panelists uh, then ask her point blank, hey, do you know if these intellectuals were being attacked? And she replies that they don't know. They only assume that they were being attacked. The panelists then retorts by saying that she simply cannot use this data to prove the accusations that she was making, uh, to which the lady answers simply by saying, no, we cannot. She says that they cannot conclude anything. They're simply trying to paint a picture. So that's it, basically. They, they simply cannot prove the accusations, right? End of story. <laughs> what a farce, man. And by the way, good on the panelists for not, not swallowing her BS. But yeah, the cross-examination did continue. The panelists then ask her that, well, given that all the information that they have in that database is considered a secondary source, how can they know that these people are telling the truth? How do they check that they are telling the truth? And she replied that they simply asked them where they got the information from, the second-hand information, and they just take them at their word. But even worse, once they have asked, then those witnesses are registered in her database as confirmed. Now, let's step back for one second. Let's say, for example, that I am a separatist and the Chinese authorities are coming after me. And, of course, I would like to leave China and seek asylum in a different country, right? That's the situation. Well, if I write an email to an organization like this, UTJD, and I lie by telling them that I'm being targeted by the Chinese government and I paint a horrible picture of abuse and repression and torture and whatnot, well, they will probably try to help me, right? And help me with the asylum seeking. And when they ask me where I got this information, 
don't you think it's possible for me to lie about the source of that information? I mean, if I can lie about what happened, I can also lie about the source of that information. They're all on the same lie. And do remember this. This is not a real court. These people are not bound by the law. People can lie and not face consequences. So how can you make any conclusions based on, on the nature of the information that UTJD collects? Why are there? Why are they a witness? Now, this lady then moves on to a section of the report where they show some satellite pictures of supposedly prisons and concentration camps. Now, the funny thing is that one of the panelists mentions that these are just Google pictures. And she says, yeah, it's Google Earth. Now, I need to mention something that we can see in those pictures. And I have argued this before. How can anyone tell what something is when they look at it from above, from the sky? How can you tell what's actually taking place inside a building just by looking at it from above? That has never made any sense to me. But secondly, when you look at those pictures, you can see a lot of blue roof. If, if anyone has been in China for five minutes, they will know that blue roofs are usually just for temporary buildings or housing or temporary structures. Any kind of detention center at any level of security just doesn't use this kind of roof. That's just an observation that can only come from somebody with China experience, something that unfortunately the panelists don't have, as I mentioned in my previous video. Um, they then move on to talk about the estimates of people detained. The panel is, um, the panel is mentioned that she's heard numbers between 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, and then she asks, how do they know which number is right? The witness says that they simply refer to other references. This is the best definition of a circular reference. She says that they can only stand behind the 5,000 plus people from which they have collected information. And as I said before, there's no way to confirm that the stories of these people who are very likely seeking asylum are true. But um, perhaps the saddest part takes place at around three hours and eight minutes. Please do go and watch this because it's, it's really bad. When a panelist asks this lady about the discrepancy about IUDs in villages and cities, the panelist refers her to page 448 and 441 and tells her that the information in her report contradicts itself. It is extremely embarrassing to see this lady struggling to get past this interrogation. Now, imagine you and your team have spent months and months preparing this report in order to save the Uyghurs from the evil Chinese government and you get called out on your incompetence live just like that. That has got to be one of the most pathetic things I've seen in a long time. But I have to say it was easily surpassed right after it happened when the president of the Uyghur Tribunal, Mr. Jeffrey Nees, swoops in and tells the lady that she can fix her report before September. What the heck, man? Anyway, guys, uh, I did not watch the whole 10 hour uh, thing. It's just too long. I only have time to watch about three and a half hours. But this is what I can gather from it. It's all a farce. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So there you go, guys. That's all I have to share with you today. Um, I will be making other videos about, well, subsequent days. And um, yeah, bring you what I think is um, taking place in London these days. Well, that's it for today, guys. You know what to do. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you like the content on my channel, then consider subscribing to it. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And as always, if you want to support the work that I do, as you know, I'm on the road all the time. <laughs> make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee. Or if you're here in China, you can use the link in the description. You can use, sorry, the QR code here on the screen and you can buy me a cup of coffee that way. All right. Until I see you again, guys. Take it easy and bye for now.